Hi, today I wanted to talk about a CD player that I recently got from Goodwill called the AIWA or Iwa XRX7. So I got this CD player back in January. I just was at a random Goodwill, saw it, thought it looked really interesting and decided to take a chance on it. The manufacture date on this CD player is October 2001. So this is over 20 years old and for me to think about investing into CDs as a physical medium was already on my mind whenever I was looking at this. I actually posted a TikTok whenever I first got it. I just found one of the coolest CD players for $12 at Goodwill and I'm gonna show it to you. So I've never heard of the brand AIWA before, but I've somehow this TikTok gained a lot of traction and realized that like maybe I'm not the only person who's like geeking out about this cool thing. What I really wanted to do is kind of like a deep dive in the history about this product and how it, it performs in 2023, why I choose CDs as a medium over other things. Most of the CD players that I've seen or grown up with were just big kind of black boxes with really robust button systems and this one is it's just got a lot of personality and i was really excited to see it i said that it was retro and a lot of people kind of were like whoa this is the cds are still around i had already seen some cd players that are kind of similar to this and it reminded me of a, not, not just old technology that's like kind of semi-translucent but also a few other cd players that i had my eye on that were way out of my price range notably the bio sound 9000 which is just a beautiful audio system. So why did I get a CD player in 2023? Well, first of all, I've always thought that CDs are kind of a really interesting and fun medium. Similar to other flat media discs like DVDs, it's just a metallic layer and I just think that they still look very futuristic and have interesting designs on the front. This one's just kind of a plain one. While vinyl records are played with a physical needle that contacts and moves along grooves in the disc to be able to transcribe and play audio, a CD is just played using a laser that beams up and reflects off of pits and valleys that are laser etched into a piece of plastic and that's transcribed within a chip and then outputs music. Even whenever I think of it now, I'm like, how do they think of this? Because it's transcribed digitally, unless there's a just absolute demolishing scratch or something on the disc, you always get the same exact quality of play no matter how many times you play it, no matter how old the disc is. That's not the same with vinyl. So that's part of the reason why I wanted as a physical medium to collect a CD versus a vinyl. Second, I think there's just something really special about having a physical piece of media from an artist I love. Generally, streaming music can be kind of thoughtless or unpersonal. You push a button, you can play any song you want by any artist on any device you want. Just by tapping the screen, you know, it's very easy to get access to anything. Whereas if you're using a CD, it's a very intentional piece. You, you select the album, you grab something that you really enjoy and you put it into the player, you push the play button, you are committed to the listening experience that the artist has crafted for you in this span of time. You can obviously skip between songs, but what I appreciate the most is an album that from start to finish, you commit to, you listen to all the way through, you hear the artist's full message, and that's it. You don't have a smartphone where you push the play button and then swipe up and then you're on Instagram and you're distracted and you're not listening to anything. It's just, it's a very engaging experience. And CDs also have lots of additional artwork built into them. Not only do you have a front and a back of a CD case, but you also have booklets that have lyrics or additional information, or maybe like a story from the artist, artwork, photographs. There's just so many additional pieces of lost media that you don't get in the streaming experience. And I think for artists that I really enjoy, I love having the additional artwork that they wanted to put along with their music. It comes down to two main mediums, you know, CDs or vinyl records. I think that CDs are a better value. Vinyl records are not cheap. They can go from 20 at the lower range to up to $50 for a brand new recently pressed record. And I just don't want to spend that much on a large piece of plastic. I can spend 
$10 on a brand new CD. CDs are one of the few pieces of physical objects that have not increased in price since they were pretty much originated. A dollar per song is pretty much how a CD album goes. Most CDs that I get brand new from artists are $12, $10, $13 for a brand new disc. So 13 songs, a dollar a song. It's, it's so nice. And I can't get that in a, a vinyl. Also, the size. Look at how compact these discs are. I can put this, I can put 10 of these in my car and still have space for other stuff. I can play them in my car. I can play a CD, take it from my house and put it into my car that has a CD player and listen to ultra high quality music. And I, I get it. Uh, other people have progressed and cars have CarPlay now and, and Android audio and you plug your phone in through an aux and it's way easier. But there's just something about putting a CD in and not thinking about it that I really enjoy. Same with listening at my home. You put a CD in and that's that. This is considered a microsystem. So it has four main functions, CD, auxiliary, and AM, FM radio. So I use it for CDs mostly, but I also have a input through the back, an auxiliary input. There's a red and white cable input that you can use. And I just have an AirPlay receiver playing through it so I can AirPlay anything from my phone or Apple devices, which is really convenient. There are five main buttons on the front, a standby button, a demo button, which flashes all the different colors and kind of shows a demo of what the screen can do. A display button which toggles the time code, track number, and how long the album is. Then you have the color selector button which gives you 12 different preset colors and three manual colors that you can dial in with the big knob. The LCD screen can reach a pretty wide range of colors using the R, G, and B selection tools. You can also dial in to specific colors as well. Using the range between 0 and 50, you can mix all the colors together and kind of get close to whatever color you want. Next is the Q surround button, which essentially turns on a proprietary sound processing algorithm that can create a 3D surround audio effect from a typical stereo pair of speakers. From what I've read, the Q sound technology was created for use in the pop music and film audio mixing industry in the early 90s and slowly adapted into general consumer products such as the Sega Dreamcast consoles, computer sound cards, cell phones, and eventually CD microsystems just like this one. Basically, this is like the early 2000s version of Dolby 3D audio or Dolby Atmos. And I actually really enjoy listening to music with this turned on because it does create quite a wider soundstage for the songs I listen to, and I can hear different parts of the songs highlighted, like background vocals or other instruments that are otherwise tucked into the background of most other mixes. Next to the large main control knob, there are two buttons, Mode and Enter, and those are used to toggle through the different settings and options you can use on this player, such as treble and bass tuning, a sleep timer, which will turn off your music after a certain amount of time, and an alarm feature. This is a top-loading CD player where you press a button and a clear acrylic lid will open up, revealing the spot to place your CDs. Pop them in and press play and you can watch your disc spin through the top, which I think is just so cool. I've used plenty of top-loading CD players before, but I think this one is just truly unique just in the design of the clear transparent lid. In certain light, all the transparent pieces shine and shimmer with hints of this transparent Y2K teal color that pops through. There are five main buttons on the top of the player, a pause button, stop button, play button, and then backward and forward seek buttons. On the right side, there are buttons to change the different inputs. So there's a FM tuner button, a auxiliary in slash video button, and then a CD button to play CD. And finally, of course, the open close button for the CD lid. Alternatively, you can use this button to power on the player from standby, and you can also use the power button to close the lid as well. So on the back of this player, there are a bunch of useful input and output ports. On the top, there are AM and FM radio antenna inputs. I haven't used those yet. A digital optical audio out port, which is really handy to have. Um, traditional red and black speaker wire inputs for left and right speakers. An auxiliary in port, a line out port, both red and white wires, and even an optional port for a subwoofer. Other than the colorful transparent like green teal feet, the underside doesn't really have much going on other than a bunch of ventilation ports. The weight of this is pretty substantial. It's a few pounds itself, but I mean, you won't know that having it set down. Now, obviously the most enticing part of this 
player is the way that it shows off the CDs through the top as you're playing it. It's a really great way to showcase the little details that artists can put into their physical media, and it's something that you don't really get to experience when you're streaming music. I always think of it as a little extra bonus when an artist will have a really cool design on their CD that you only get to see in that format. I mean, the shape of it's really interesting. It's kind of like a wedge shape and late 90s early 2000s all of the technology was kind of going this translucent you know you could see all the components through it and they had funky colors sometimes i just think that's such a cool way that tech was displayed back then. I love all the details they put into the design, such as the rippled plastic that give a nice texture on both sides, as well as the exposed screws for an overall very metallic and industrial type of design. To me, it just never gets old putting CDs in and watching them spin and seeing their artwork. It's something I find so pleasing and it adds an extra layer of enjoyment to playing physical media like this. This is an unmistakably early 2000s style of tech design, but I think it looks so good, especially when you compare it to a lot of the modern tech components in our lives that are mostly visually big black rectangles designed to recede back into the space. This piece just stands out and it has a lot of personality. As a piece of tech that's a little over 20 years old, it performs flawlessly. It opens and closes with little to no effort and loads in seconds, which is faster than some computers, I can say. All of the buttons are still extremely responsive. The only thing is that the fan can be a little loud sometimes, but it is just such an easy way to listen to music. Some notable details on the front are exposed screws, hex screws, a IR sensor, and a headphone output jack. So these 2.5 millimeter hex screws are actually really nice from a user repair standpoint. I didn't have to put a whole lot of effort into unscrewing these and they weren't hidden under a bunch of plastic pieces like most modern technology is. The left side is a free moving component. You can see as I lift it up, there's no resistance and the right side is actually where the motor is. So just one side is doing all of the heavy lifting for this big acrylic top piece. It's pretty substantial for one tiny motor and you can kind of hear it go whenever it's opening. This acrylic piece is about a few millimeters wide. It has this shiny metallic plastic piece in the center and these interesting dotted opaque accent pieces where the screws go. The top lid is actually pretty scratched up on mine. That's just how it was whenever I got it. So eventually it'd be really nice if I would be able to find a replacement top for it of some sort. I didn't really get much of a CD experience growing up. I mean, I had maybe two or three that I got. Parents had a bunch of CDs. My dad still has a bunch of CDs that I've scalped a few from uh, over the past couple of years. I had a few cassettes, uh, had a few CDs, and then I just got an MP3 player when I was about seven or eight and from that point on it was there's kind of no point having a cd player but now whenever an artist releases a new album and it's on a cd it's really exciting to be able to get that experience of getting a brand new album on a physical copy and being able to listen to it thing it's just like a piece of nostalgia i guess for me and i get that that's the same reason why people do vinyl or cassettes which are also growing in popularity right now it also goes to support some smaller artists that might not have a lot of income from streaming if they do have a physical release because more money goes towards them that way than it would be if i were to stream their song a hundred times you know i never really actually heard of the brand aiwa or Iowa, as I later found out, I was skeptical of the quality of the player, the quality of the materials, if it was even going to work. I mean, all I could do in Goodwill was plug it in and put a CD in. I found some old speakers that happened to have a speaker wire attached to it and plugged it in and it made sound happen. So I took it home. I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Had the original speakers that sold with the, with the CD player bundled with it, but they were priced separately so you could buy them separately. And both of the bottoms had broken pieces, like the stands were like chipped off or something, the plastic parts. And so I just decided not to get those speakers. And also I just was looking online really quickly as I was browsing and most of the reviews I saw did not have very good reviews of the speakers. So I actually got this really interesting video response from somebody who had a lot of information about Iwa as a company and they had just a range of wacky looking products back then and it's like kind of fun to go back in time and see what the trend of tech was back then for design and they really went out of their bounds to do some crazy looking stuff. I'll say that. So back in the late 90s and early 2000s, Iowa was competing with Sony, Toshiba, 
and a few other home consumer audio devices. Sony had a major advantage with their Walkman, so Iowa was kind of focused on creating a playful brand with out of the ordinary designs, quirky features. Their ad campaigns were a little weird. They tried to cater to a little bit of a younger demographic. Products around this time that had this very distinct kind of like teal and silver, very futuristic, like bubbly, organic style designs. And Iowa kind of jumped on this trend and, and went with their own type of look. Eventually though, to be able to be taken a little bit more seriously along the other competitors, they had to create a more serious look for their devices so they did get more boxy and plain and just utilitarian style and so it was kind of sad to see um, as I was doing some research how they evolved from this kind of funky fun design to just straight up speakers and boxes. Eventually the company did fall behind. They were the lower tier so people who didn't already kind of have brand loyalty they just there was no point getting that and Alongside all of this was also the invention of the mp3 player and iPod, so. I tried to find this player online. As of now, they've kind of gone up in price to about $160 to $200, which is kind of funny to see, considering I got mine for $12. They sell with the speakers that came with the original product, which has different face plates, but I've heard reviews that the speakers are pretty bad and not really worth keeping, so I have my own speakers. What I thought was really interesting is how ugly the remote is for this system compared to something that they already had made. They had really interesting remote designs for other products, but for this one it's just a crappy old standard remote. This is probably at the end of their budget cycle when they made this product, but look at how pretty this is. Even the buttons match the styling. I don't even have a remote with mine, so it doesn't really matter that much, but I'm almost tempted to order this one specific just to see if it would work with mine. I'm sure it wouldn't, but might as well try. Overall, I think having a thrifted CD player that I only got for less than $15 is such a nice addition to my little tech landscape. And I'm pretty much a minimalist when it comes to tech. I don't like having a lot of things. I don't like um, overloading myself with a huge collection of items and CDs. I've got a decent collection already. There's more off to the side that I'm not even seeing. Other than that, it's like I, I do like having a smaller physical piece of art that I can look at from an artist that I always love and if I end up in the future not having access to internet at some point or if an artist decides to remove their music from a service that is online I still have access to their music and unless I get rid of it or something happens to the physical piece of media I'll have it forever and that's really important to me and also it's just like it's just it's fun it's fun to be able to go to a thrift store or a just a random place and find an album that you haven't seen or or heard of in a long time and just get it it's also just a piece of tech that it survived the landfill a lot of tech these days isn't built to the same quality or if something stops working uh, what what do the majority of people do with it probably not recycle it that's that's for sure. People will probably just throw it in the trash and not think twice. Knowing that I'm using this piece of technology as long as I can throughout its lifespan, it's 20 years old now, who knows how much longer it will last. But I know that I am I'm keeping it away from the landfill and I'm I'm extending its life and getting so much, you know, joy out of using it. If anybody has any comments or questions or feedback, it would be great to read about it um, in the comment section. Questions about CD players, how they work, better off searching about that you know I'm, I'm not a tech guru I was actually a really good channel called technology connections that I've learned so much about technology from he has great 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 video essays anyway thank you for watching this little rundown after I posted a video that gained a bunch of traction uh, and I just saw that other people were really interested in it I figured I would do a much more detailed rundown of all the different things and, and things that I've learned about uh, CD players and and the history of things. It's just kind of fun to look back on and I hope other people find some interest in it as well. I haven't really worked on uh, YouTube as a format before so I hope this is kind of cohesive in some sort of way and eventually maybe I'll do some other videos if other people find things like this as interesting as I do. I love learning about things in tech and hopefully I can expand and, and do some more of this in my free time but hopefully you found some new information or you got to see some cool stuff about the CD player and thanks for watching. Watching.